Welcome into this edition of Fantasy Film Ball, and on this episode, we are reviewing Bones and all Luca Guadagnino's brand new film starring Taylor Russell, Timothy Chalamet, and Mark Rylance. My name is Dill, and with me is Matt. And Matt, this is a movie I've been hyping up for so long, so anticipatedly waiting for, and it lived up to expectations for me, but for you. I don't know, how are you going into this movie? Were you expecting big things? Were you like, I don't know about this premise because it is pretty out there because it is. For those who don't really know, we are going to do a full spoiler discussion here. If you have not seen Bones and all yet, please leave the video. I don't care about watch time. I don't care about views. I want you to see this movie because this movie is either my favorite or my second favorite of the year. And I've seen like 110 movies that have came out this year. So that's a huge recommendation for me. Then come back and listen to both of us talk about it. But yes, Bones and All, great movie, cannibals, road trips, love, everything. Did you like it? I, I did like it. I didn't like it as much as you did, though. Uh, so for, for Bones and All, uh, this is one that I was anticipating, but I, I'm not going to say I was, like, the most anticipating this one. I am so squeamish with anything with cannibals. Uh, like, the film Raw, I gave a horrible review when I first watched Raw um, because it grossed me out so much that I, I just couldn't deal with it. And then I watched it again later, and I was still grossed out, but I was like, no, this is actually a really good movie. I just hate watching people eat people. I think it's so... I can't do it. I can't do it. And so uh, when it came to this movie, I wasn't really fiercely anticipating it because I know how much I um, uh, am uncomfortable with cannibal movies. I'm not a cannibal movie guy. You know, weird, right? I don't love seeing Whoa. people eat people. What a weird thing. Um, but no, I mean, I I think Luca Guadagnino has had some fantastic films over the past few years. And I'm always interested to see what he does. Uh, and, you know, the, the entire concept of it being a love story between Taylor Russell, who is one of the best Canadian actors. I need to claim Taylor Russell right now. Canadian actors out there um, who gave one of my favorite performances of the 2010s in Waves, which is, again, just an, an incredible film, and Taylor Russell is so good in it, plus Timothy Chalamet, who is obviously an incredible actor. So those two coming together for Luca Guadagnino doing a horror romance, yeah, very intriguing. Uh, but again, I still have reservations with the whole cannibal thing. I, I, I'm gonna be honest, I am biased against cannibals. Um, and part of that, you know, I, I was really squeamish during a lot of this movie. So, I, I know you gave this a, a strong 10 out of 10, uh, but for me, I would actually say, personally, I, I gave this film a light 7 out of 10. Um, there was a lot that I really liked about it, but personally, I would say that this is, if I were to rank Luca Guadagnino's films, I'd go Call Me By Your Name, Suspiria, I Am Love, Bones and All, and then a bigger splash at the very bottom. So... It's my second from the bottom Luca Guadagnino film, and I'm, I'm so sorry about that because I know you loved this film so much. I did. Bones and All really kind of hit everything I wanted it to be, which is kind of weird because I wasn't really expecting much going into this. Um, but I really, I shouldn't say expecting much. I kind of went in with an, like an open mind, not really thinking about anything. Uh, just really opening myself up to it because I have not read the book, but I know someone who has. Like I am very much encouraged. I'm like, hey, read this book so then when we see the movie you can tell me what was accurate what wasn't accurate and i think a lot of the switches they made from the book to film were very much for the positive for the story because i think um to counteract your point because i but i mean not even counteract just to be a little bit different yeah. i know everyone's interpretations to everything is a little bit different for me i've never really been squeamish to blood or to horror to violence i often find that my favorite movies and my least favorite movies are in that horror genre because i think horror is either something you can do amazing or you can just really shit the bed and be bottom line and be like awful but i think guadagnino and company here really knock out the park taylor russell does a beautiful job portraying Marin and they're in such like a compelling engaging and emotional relatable fashion like even though obviously not a cannibal you're not a cannibal but i can really connect and resonate with her character of isolation and feeling like abandonment but also finding yourselves in others but also being a little bit wary 
and scared of other people, even though they are like you, but they're not entirely like you. And like you said, she keeps proving why she's one of today's best working actors. Uh, Waves, her performance in Waves was my favorite supporting performance of the year. Maybe it was a lead, maybe it was supporting. It's one of those borderline. This one, she's clearly a lead. I can't wait to see what she does next. Chalamet does Chalamet stuff. He looks cool. He acts cool. He does cool stuff. But for this movie, as much as I love Taylor Russell, praise her, there's one person who just absolutely steals this movie. Every time they pop up, they pop up like three times and you can never take your eyes off of them. Because, you know, life is never dull or sully. Because Mark Rylance is the greatest of all time. He's becoming one of my favorite actors. This is like his third, fourth straight performance where he's doing such a weird character, so off the walls, but it works so well. Like, I don't understand how he nails, like, the mannerisms of just, like, so hunched or so, like, just off-putting. It's like your squeamish, my squeamish came from, like, his body, not so much of eating or biting. It was the whole, like his posture and how he just mannered himself and how he was so not i don't want to say relatable but you cared for a character that was so like evil and despicable because he wasn't evil naturally the world kind of made him evil from being isolated no one being around and you feel for him and you feel bad that all this stuff has happened to him but he's still like the antagonist and like the villain of the story but to end my long ramble rant the text in this movie amazing that i could only highlight one it would be the score from Reznor and Ross. Uh, they always do good work, but if I dare to say, this is their best work. Uh, did you have a favorite tech? And Ooh. if so, which one was it? Ooh. Um, I mean, that's a that's a really hard question. I I liked the score. I didn't love the score, and I, I think it is very bold to say that it's Reznor and Ross's best work when they Boldness did Soul, when they did the Social Network, when they did the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Um, even like Watchmen, I think is, is a stronger score. I really liked the guitar piece that played, you know, every time they were in the car, I think that was great, but the more ambient stuff didn't really do it for me here. Uh, actually, I wouldn't even say that this is Reznor and Ross's best score of the year. I prefer Empire of Light's score. Uh, I don't even like Empire of Light, but I thought their score there was quite good. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that the makeup, they did a fantastic job with. Uh, and and production design i i would want to shout out production design a little bit there um but yeah i mean overall no, none of the text really stood out incredibly strongly for me but if i also had to pick a standout here it's also mark rylance personally uh, i would say i wasn't as hot on taylor russell's performance here as most people were um i've seen a lot of people say that she's one of the best performances of the year i don't necessarily agree i didn't really I, I connected with what her character was going through, but I didn't find the performance as interesting as I wanted to. Mark Rylance, I thought, you know, he did it really well, albeit it did feel like he was doing um, a Herbert the Pervert invention, uh, impression from Family Guy, like a lot of the time. But outside of, of the corniness of basically being like, Hassan, do you want some popsicles? Outside of that surface level thing, he did some really interesting stuff with his facial mannerisms that really just showed that um, he wasn't making the choices with his mind. He was making them with his whole body. And like what I'm talking about is there's this moment in the film. There's this stunning goddamn moment um, where it's a close up on Mark Rylance's face and a little dribble of spit comes to the front of his mouth and he starts to drool. And you, as an actor, how do you do that? How the hell do you do that as an actor? Like, in one close take, like, salivate and slobber. Um, like, he he Pavloved himself there. I, I, what the hell? That was such a, a great moment. But yeah, I mean, overall, I I think you, you've you said to me that um, Mark Rylance is your number one supporting performance of the year. Personally, I wouldn't put him in my top ten but I think he had some moments that were just like, yes, this is why Mark Rylance is one of the best working actors right now. Definitely. Um, fully agree with that statement of one of the best working actors. The other tech I really want to give a shout out to in addition to the ones that you mentioned, the editing. I thought there was some very inspired editing choices here. And for a movie where not much happens at various points, the movie never felt like it was a slog or it was a dull. It felt like the story was, at least for me, continuously progressing the whole time at its own pace. 
obviously some moments are a lot more ramped up to 10 and some moments are kind of like a two or three but they all end up coming together at the end to help press because whether it is the cross fades that perfectly blend themselves into the next shots or just the the moments it cuts on like you mentioned that extreme close-up of rylance um and there's another one with him where he's by uh, the van and maybe the same one you're talking about um where it cuts to him and he just has a moment to give like the facial transformation of how he wants to support Marin. but then when she tells him no you see that complete shift in his whole body from be like okay i'm a little weird but i'm your friend to I hate you you're awful sort of reaction his whole body switches and i don't know i really love this movie i understand why some people may be off of this movie uh but mm -hmm. that's the beauty of cinema <laughs> beauty of yeah, cinema i i mean i i would definitely agree that the film never felt slow or felt like a drag but part of why i gave this film a, a light seven out of ten is because I feel like the story at times feels a little bit aimless. And that kind of comes with the territory of being a road trip movie, of being a movie where the main character doesn't really know where she's going or doesn't know what she wants, and she stumbles upon these things on the way, and people weave in and out of the story. But the thing that I felt about this is that I, I felt that there was at times a bit of a lack of an overarching goal, uh, a bit of a lack of an overarching conflict, um, really that's what it is I didn't feel like the conflict continued through the film in a really satisfying way like you said Mark Rylance Sully is the antagonist of the film but I don't I didn't feel like he was the antagonist he was just a character that showed up a few times and you know was creepy and then would disappear but I think if you have an antagonist you want them to be like a thematic through line to the film and Personally, I didn't really feel like I got that out of the movie. Um, but that said, it was never boring. It was always interesting. I really loved the character interactions between Timothy Chalamet and Taylor Russell's characters. Um, but I just, I just wish that there was a little bit more narrative cohesion through the film. Um, and I think that's that's why I felt a little bit distant from it. Mm -hmm. I would say to maybe help if you ever do decide to rewatch this. Uh, to me, the antagonists are themselves because it deals, at least to me, what I got out of it was learning self-love, comb combating with self-hate because there's things that you're born with that everyone has. You're born with whatever it's your nose or your eyes or something that you just don't love or you don't like about yourself. For these people, they're cannibals. Uh, but so it's the extremists. So like throughout the movie, there's various times where like they had to make decisions where they are not happy with them, but it's what they have to do to live. And then just Mark Rylance is just like, the at the end the accumulation of what the worst decisions you can make with your life are compared to how they end up deciding to live with essentially playing house in that last act but right similar to you i would say a seven is about equivalent to a b and that's what this movie got from cinema score which i think is a great reaction for this type of movie i saw a lot of people online saying this is a c this is a d type cinema score movies like some horror movies do get um However, with it being, like, it seems like audiences are more receptive to this. I know I've mentioned in the show in the past, I could see an angle for a best adapted screenplay with how weak that category is. Because, I mean, you have women talking at one, she said at two, glass on at three, and you have, like, two open slots. What to do with them? You have a Pinocchio, you have a Maverick, you have a Whale. Uh, now it looks like maybe you have a Bones and all. Do you think this is a sole screenplay nominee, or do you think this is nothing? I this is nothing. This is absolutely nothing. If if it gets anything, it would be makeup. Um, but I mean, I just do not see any world. And, and I'm really sorry to rain on your parade here. <laughs> I wouldn't put this in my top ten for screenplay. I wouldn't put this in my top fifteen for screenplay. It is so dark. It is so grotesque. It, like you know, I think those are the best descriptions for it. And it's so bloody and hard to watch. And at times repugnant um, that I, I can't I can see a lot of Academy voters turning the film off before mm -hmm. getting through it. Um, I think a lot of the people that went to see it on the opening weekend are the people that are down for this type of movie. You know, uh, are people who are up to seeing um, massive amounts of blood and gore. I, I think similar to to town last year where people thought oh could this get a directing nomination could this get uh, international feature the awards voters 
were not really the ones going to see that film. Um, and it did end up getting a BAFTA nomination, but I don't think it ever would have gotten that if they didn't have a jury deciding. And Bones and All feels very similar to me. I, I don't think that there's a chance in hell that this comes near the Oscars. Um, if anything, you know, this will be one where in 10 years people will look back and say, yeah, we screwed up. This one was better than, than the Oscars treated it. But again, you know, Luca Guadagnino, he made Suspiria a few years ago, and that film didn't scratch the Oscars. Um, I've had this talk many times. Just because you're an Oscar nominee one time doesn't mean you're going to continue to be. And, you know, uh, he had Call Me By Your Name, and then Suspiria, and then this. And I, I don't think that... I don't think that this one's coming near the Oscars. No, I, I definitely agree. Um, I think... The only chance would be for Adapted. I don't think Ryan Lance is a player. I don't think that Makeup is a player just with how tough this year is because you have like the normal best picture like front runner candidates and then you throw in like a Wakanda Forever or a Woman King that can take up some more of those populist or inspired type choices. But like my point with Cinema Score was just showing like in the past horror movies that because you mentioned like people who go opening night are the people who are down for it. Like Hereditary got a D plus. Um, Men from earlier this year got a D plus and then if you look back just a little bit, The Witch got a C minus and like Malignant yeah. got a C. So it's not always like that's what I was just saying with horror movies. Usually they don't really do well, even with the crowd that normally goes from that's why I was like, this one seems to be doing a little bit better, so there's maybe a shot, but still not something I'm willing to put money on. Well, the thing with those movies that you mentioned, Hereditary, Men, The Witch, those are movies like my my partner's uncle is one of the biggest horror fans ever i mentioned hereditary to him and he's like i hate that fucking movie i hate it so much huge horror fan and it's because those films that you mentioned those are all very elevated horror they're movies that they take the horror genre and then they don't they don't really go for the horror until the very end it's just mm -hmm. a lot of paranoia whereas bones and all i think delivers on the horror throughout uh, you come in knowing you're seeing a cannibal movie, and it delivered on a cannibal movie. Cinema score, if anything, I think Cinema Score is a, a great way to demonstrate how much a film, not how good a film is, but how much a film delivered on its promise. Because I can see Hereditary getting a D plus. Because if you go into that being like, this is going to scare the shit out of me, and you don't get that, you're not going to rate, rate it highly. It doesn't mean it's not a good film. It just means the audience didn't get what they wanted out of it. With Bones and All getting a B, people wanted a cannibal film. They got a cannibal film. You know, um, that's that's the way I see Cinema Score. And so overall, I don't think that marks it for Oscars or anything. Um, you know, maybe if it got like an A plus or something, I'd be like, oh wow, this could be a contender. But this type of movie would never get a grade that high because it's it is so. Um, grotesque we've used the word earlier it's it's grotesque it's nasty it's hard to watch it's like it made me squirm in my seat which uh, you know that's that's what you want out of a film like this definitely well you mentioned before oscar viewers if they put this on they may turn it off but the, for the people out there on youtube who are still here i appreciate it let us know your thoughts below is this a movie that you love like me or you're a little bit more mixed one like matt or are you on the opposite side and you think this movie is awful. We would love to know. Drop that down below. Stay tuned to the channel because we have more reviews coming out later this week. And as always, come back next week because we have new stuff every single day here on Fantasy Film Ball.